Okay, this session is about the parts of brushes and understanding your brushes. First of all, I've got this red set, a red handle set. These are your red sables that I use in old. And I keep them separate from my acrylic brushes. But I just wanted to show you that. Um, I have a set of oil painting brushes and plus a set of the acrylics. That out of the way. And we're going to go over the parts of a brush. First of all, <coughs> anytime you see a package and they've got a good sale on them and you think, oh, I'm going to buy that, normally what they're trying to do at that point is to get rid of some of the bad brushes. So they'll sell them as a kit, thinking you're getting a good deal, and there'll probably be two brushes in it that you can use. Now, the parts of a brush, and we're going to start with a flat brush, and this one is flat. You've got your um, bristles, your ferrules, and your handles. And this is just giving you the points of it. The front and the back this side and this side. Just call your flat surface of the brush. Then you have your sides of the brush. This is your most important thing to me. That is your chisel edge. C-H-I-S-E-L. And in my type of painting, I want a brush that's going to be as flat across there when I work with it than it could possibly be. This part of the brush and this part are both called the corners. And there are times that you can take a corner of the brush and dip it into some paint and then kind of blend it to make sure you don't have a hunk of paint. The silver part is your ferrule. And that's F-E-R-R-U-L-E. Then your handle. Now we work mainly with the short handle brushes, but you've seen long handle brushes. And those are for people that are sitting way back here and they're uh, usually on the easel and can stand up and look and work with it. We do more detail, so we're up closer. And you couldn't be working so good with a long handled brush when you're right down here like this. So you need a short handle. And that's that part. Now, let me turn the page here. I want to show you can see this good. So when you hear what the flat surface is, the corner of the brush, and etc., you'll know exactly what those mean. Now, the difference in the flats, you have a shader and a chisel. The shader has longer bristles and it's used to usually carry more water and also to carry more paint. The chisels are shorter as you can see the difference in those. Same size except I picked up the wrong one. And, but yet shorter. The bristles are shorter. So that gives me more control and detail, and I'm not carrying a lot of paint or water. Well, I'm carrying paint, but not a lot. And then this is your design that we're working on. And um, I would be using my flat that I just lost. Oh, for heaven's sake, here it is. And when you're looking at our design, that we're working on, <coughs> the bear, the pears, and the bird, which is a little chickadee. On any animal, you've got to think which way, where is the tail? Because most animals, all their hair grows towards the tail, so his tail is down in behind that pear. So when I'm working with his fur, I want to work rounded, but not straight up. Or then he looks a little bit electrocuted. So I want to follow that 
line with the chisel edge of my brush and go right down. And then this is his back, and it's kind of more straighter, no fur. The little front tummy can have some fur. Now, what am I using? The chisel edge of that brush. That's very important that you learn that you work with the chisel edge. So I don't need to load it all the way to the ferrule. I'm loading it uh, probably a third or half way. And it's better to start with too little paint than too much because then you got to figure out what you're going to do with all of it. So once I get it based in, this fur is like your own hair. It's going to grow over the back. But when I come up into here, I want to chisel up into this chest area. And I also want to chisel this down into this chest area. Plus, this area would be chiseled. Because you do not want to leave a straight line of paint between those two. It will never come out. It will always be a line. So you're using it to brush this fur up into this and this back down into the chest area. This will come over. But even this side would have to be chiseled in a little bit so that it comes together good. And down on the beak, you're going to chisel in just a touch because the fur grows over a bird's beak. Now the same thing with this leaf. The pear leaf has some little sharp edges, so I'm just kind of bringing that out. And we'll, we'll do more when we're actually base cutting. But I wanted you to get the feel of that before we started. But mainly I want you to see the chisel edge. And that's why I love this brush. This one is good. I mean, I have nothing against shaders, but it just see I have more control over the chisel than I do over the other type of shaders. So that's a chisel versus a shader. And that's kind of why I use that. Then you've got some other brushes that you use. This is just a dagger or an angler. And a lot of people use those. I'm going to dampen it. It gets a good chisel edge. This is a squirrel, a fake squirrel, faux squirrel. And But I was showing these at a demo and was amazed what a great chisel edge that kept. So that could also be used. Then you have your round brushes, and they come in all sizes. And this is what I refer to as my liner. This one is a size 2. Now when you're working with a liner brush, they have to be at least the bristles a half inch or longer, or they're not considered a liner. Some of you work with script liners, um, but I use just a, about a half inch liner is what I like to work with. Those are about the only brushes I do work with. Now this is a dagger. And I have been learning to work with it. I like it. It makes some beautiful strokes. And we'll get into that a little bit. And I've showed you this before. This is just a wash brush. This is my great big wash brush. And I use that to varnish or do backgrounds. Now the reason it appears stiff is because I clean my brushes in ivory soap. And once I've got them clean and it's no more paint on the soap, I leave that soap in there and it keeps all that hair in place. And it dries that way. And I know it's ready to go again. Here's one that I just use. And you can see it's beginning to fur out. I mainly use that when I'm using a retarder. Now getting into the retarder, you can leave that actually in your brushes. It will not hurt them. In fact, it kind of conditions them. And I use that a lot. But those are my basic brushes that I work with. And then you get into mops, um, all kind of mop brushes. This is my assortment. I take this everywhere I go, especially when I'm teaching. 
And this is like a little oval. And I used it if I'm mopping or want to mop softly to blend it or back into the background somewhere. And then I have um, those in all sizes, even down to a small one. Then you have also these kind that are mops with the darker bristles. They're just soft. You want to pay money for a good wash brush because if you don't, you end up your whole time trying to get all the hairs out. Because your brushes are very important tools. Now when you go in, <clears throat> and on this side I was going to show you, I got everything everybody could possibly want or need. I've got several palette knives because students will come in and not have any with them. And bar of soap and pens to demo with and markers in case I need to mark something on their palette that has been left off. But this has just been a handy gadget. I've probably had this 20 years so I can just stick it in my tote and go. Let me get that out of the way. Now, um, the other thing I wanted to tell you is this is probably one of my favorite brushes. This is the Filbert. The difference in these filberts, and this is a Nancy Kenny filbert, which I don't have a one, but this one. It has a very tiny, skinny edge. Flat chisel edge, and it also is a chisel. And I can use it to um, get those little edges when I want to come back and refine. But I call that a specialty brush. And then you have your um, dabbers and your, um, grab one of those, she's taking it out of the box here, grab that, chisels, and here's a small one. And these are the dabbers, a small dabber that's worn out and a medium-sized dabber. We tried a large one, but they were just... Uh, not controllable. I called them dabbers because I could dab, but I'm never going straight down like this, you'll ruin your brush. And if you look, if I spread that out, it also has a chisel edge straight across. And that's what I use a lot too. And I can come in and work in this tummy using that chisel edge with a little rubbing motion. I can put in my dark values and then wipe the brush good on a paper towel and softly pat or blend it and move it around where I want it. And um, this brush is my favorite and it goes real fast. So I don't float. If you're floating, of course, you know you're going to side load your brush. And that's another thing I wanted to mention. Let's use this big one. You can side load brushes to do floats or washes or uh, add more paint to areas you need to. But um, some of you are very good at it and some of us just don't choose to use that method. But there's nothing wrong with that at all. But um, And you want a good floater if you're working with floating brushes. And you do want the long shaders for that. But as I said, I'm more of a detail painter. So I work with the shorter bristles. And um, mainly I work with flats, my filbert that I showed you, and my two dabbers, small and medium. And occasionally I'll mop and I work with my liner. And it's about a half inch. And when you go into a store, you can look um, at the different brushes they have. And if they're real long, um, if they say for, you know, oil painting or you pick them up and you go home to use acrylic, they'll just fold up on you. And if you take acrylic brushes and load them in oils, then you end up the same problem. They just won't move. And I hope that will give you a better understanding of brushes. Um, one of the main things as a shop owner, past shop owner, we had people always come in and pull the little clear caps off. And you knew they were serious painters because they really wanted to examine 
the hairs on the brush and make sure that they were all in good shape. And sometimes what would immediately happen, they'd put the top back on, they'd catch a hair, and then it would bend down and be stuck there. And uh, so any time I could catch it, I would just leave the tops off. No matter how good your eyesight is, you'll catch one of those hairs. But there is a remedy. You can get a little boiling hot water and just dab your brush in it, and it'll bring every hair back in place. One of the other problems that you're going to run into is if you aren't careful, is you'll get a hold of a brush like this one is furry on the end. There's nothing you can do for that. It's beginning to fan out, and that's because paint has dried near the ferrule.